สวัสดีค่ะขอต้อนรับเข้าสู่การอบรมครูผู้สอนภาษาอังกฤษซึ่งจัดโดยมูลที่การศึกษาทางไกลผ่านดาวเทียมร่วมกับสถานทูตสหรัฐอเมริกาประจำประเทศไทยและบริษัททีโอทีจำกัดมหาชนสำหรับวันนี้เป็นเซสชันที่5ของการอบรมในชุด Unlocking Learners Voices ซึ่งมีทั้งหมด6เซสชันด้วยกันนะคะสำหรับวิทยากรของเรามี2ท่านดรมาร์จีแอนเดอร์เซนและอาจารย์เชรอนซันเชสสำหรับวันนี้วิทยากรของเราคืออาจารย์เชรอนซันเชสในหัวข้อของเซสชันที่5ว่า revisiting opinions through speaking ซึ่งเราจะพูดถึงการประเมินการพูดของนักเรียนนะคะสำหรับซีรีส์นี้ชุดนี้เนี่ยเน้นในทักษะการพูดแล้วก็การเขียนนะคะซึ่งเป็นทักษะซึ่งเราจะควรจะอบรมผู้เรียนของเรานะคะให้ใช้ทักษะนี้ให้ได้ดียิ่งขึ้น Welcome you all to the English language teacher training video conference program Organized by the Distance Learning Foundation, the American Embassy Bangkok, and TOT Public Company Limited, the series called "Unlocking Learners' Voices" has six sessions, and this is six session five on revisiting opinions through speaking. Our guest speaker today is Ajahn Sharon Sanchez from t h o m a s a i University. Please welcome Ajahn Sharon. Thank you, Ajahn. Good morning, everyone. Sadika, good morning. Good morning, Chiang Mai. Good morning, Hua Hin. I hope that your semester is going well with your students. Right? I know everyone's very busy and learning a lot from each other. But today, we are focusing on how we can make our classrooms much more enjoyable and also meaningful. All right. So. Last week, we were talking a lot about opinions through writing. But for today, or not last week, two weeks ago, but for today, we are talking about speaking opinions, speaking persuasively. So I hope we'll hear a lot from you today, from teachers today, their opinions, and also sharing your students' opinions. So for today's session. It's quite similar from two weeks ago. We're going to review with Dr. Marty, well, Dr. Marty's uh, uh, concepts, and talking about new concepts with persuasive speaking. And then after that, we're going to evaluate some student samples from you, your students, talking about how they could be better, what's good about them, and what can be improved. Third part would be a fun speaking activity, hopefully fun for you, and then fun for your students when you try it with them. And of course, we're going to be looking at some rubrics. We have a teacher that sent a rubric they used, that she used for her school, and she and her colleagues. So we're going to be doing some rubric collaboration and drafting. And of course, the last part. Is thinking about how we can take this into our classrooms. Let's begin. So let's do a little review. Thinking back a few weeks ago, a long time ago, long, long, <laughs> with a partner or by yourself, think of a few ideas or concepts about speaking persuasively, or speaking what is in your head. <laughs> Your opinions. Give you about a minute. ค่ะอาจารย์จำได้ไหมคะในเซสชันที่สองของเราพูดถึงเรื่องการพูดนะคะในลักษณะเชิญชวนนะคะทำให้คนนี้คลอยตามนะคะอาจารย์พอจะจำได้ไหมว่าประเด็นสำคัญสำคัญนะคะที่ดรมาร์จีแอนเดอร์เซนได้สอนไว้นั่นมีเกี่ยวกับอะไรบ้างคะ่ะ And you have a concept, an idea, anything you remember from session two with Dr. Marty. Wherever you are, just please share it. Or if you don't remember, you can ask. <laughs> Did we talk about this one? Was it? <laughs> uh, good morning. Can you hear me? Okay. 
Yes, we can. Hi, uh, Andy. Great. Good. I'm good. Thank you. Um, I remember <laughs> talking about and watching the, the video of the, the Thai food and a man who is preparing Thai food. We talked about per being persuasive in terms of his ability to grab attention and his kind of emotional appeal also, I think. Mm, thank you. So based on the video, it was the concept of trying to be catchy and attractive so people will listen to you and pay attention and also trying to connect with the audience via emotions. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else want to add to that or something else you remember from the video besides the food? We can start talking about food again, but then we're going to get hungry and then we can't eat right now. We must focus. <laughs> All right. Well, perhaps you will be reminded of those concepts and those ideas. But she talked a little bit about cause and effect. Is this ringing a bell a little? Rationale or reasoning. The idea of giving a reason because, just the word because. I was looking through her stuff and listening to a lot of uh, the information, the videos, and with cause and effect, it's giving your idea, giving your message, and telling why. Why is this Thai dish important to eat? Or why is this good for you? Why should you eat it? Or why should we stop using plastic bags? Because the effects would be more plastic bags. We don't want any more plastic bags causing more pollution. Right, so giving your message, your main idea, what are the causes, what are the effects of it? That's one way of trying to persuade someone to do something or not to do something. And of course, the idea of rationale or reasoning, it has to be sound or it has to be logical. Right? People must be able to believe in you and say, that's right, actually, that makes sense, right? And just the word because, I think you all know the meaning of because, right? Giving the reason. Hopefully you can think of more throughout this session. Okay, now about two weeks ago, I introduced these three concepts. Can we remember them a little bit? Anything you remember from them? I'll give you about another minute. <laughs> How are they related to opinions? The ethos, pathos, and logos. If you already remember, you can just share it wherever, whichever site you are. Well, let me ask, what, which one has to do with logic or facts? The words logic, the word logic, the letters L-O-G are in there. <laughs> There's a few <laughs> logic. So logos, right? Logos has to do with logic. Does it make sense? When you are trying to convince me that watching this movie in SFX World Cinema is better than watching at um, Lido. And I say, no, but I like Lido because it's cheaper. It's only 100 baht. Well, SFX Cinema, you can relax in a more comfortable seat. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's more expensive, but I don't know. I can't actually think of any really sound logic because I like Lido better. But <laughs> if I were to try to convince you of something, I would like to give you some hard facts, concrete evidence, right? So that's logos, statistics, facts, logic, logical. Pathos. Does anyone remember pathos? That's emotion, right? Connection. When you want someone to believe what you are saying, 
when you want someone to connect with you and feel with you, just like what Andy said about the video, right, about Thai food. The man wanted to really understand you and say, yeah, actually, that, that sounds good, right? You are connecting with your listener, and then they can start talking with you and follow what you say, right? Connecting with you emotionally. And ethos is the character of the person. The person himself or the person herself, is he or she believable? Is he or she credible? Can you believe in this person? Does the person seem like an honest person, a good person? So that's ethos. It's okay, you don't have to remember the fancy words, but just character, emotion, and logic, right? So, um, facts. ก็สามคำนี้นะคะ ethos logos แล้วก็ pathos นี่นะคะอาจารย์ก็ได้แนะนำไว้ในเซสชันที่แล้วนะคะว่าการที่เราจะพูดหรือว่าเขียนอะไรนะคะเพื่อที่จะชักชวนให้ผู้อ่านหรือผู้ฟังคล้อยตามเราเนี่ยนะคะก็น่าจะมี3ส่วนนี้ด้วยกันนะคะ ethos ก็คือ character นะคะ character ว่าผู้พูดหรือว่าผู้เขียนเนี่ยเขาเป็นคนที่น่าเชื่อถือไหมนะคะแล้วก็โลโก้ก็คือลอจิกนะคะว่าสิ่งที่เขาพูดหรือเขียนเนี่ยแม็กเซนส์ไหมนะคะมีเหตุมีผลไหมนะคะแล้วก็พาร์ทโตสก็คืออิโมชั่นัลคอนเนคชั่นนะคะว่าสิ่งที่เขาพูดหรือเขียนเนี่ยทําให้เรามีอารมณ์ร่วมไหมมีความรู้สึกคล้อยตามไหมเห็นวิธีการปรุงอาหารเขาแล้วก็อยากรับประทานไหมหรืออะไรอย่างนั้นนะคะค่ะ Thank you So let's do a little exercise to wake our brains up a little bit Okay I use this for my classes too this clip uh, Well this movie Baraka was made about 10 years ago or a little over 10 years ago It's kind of scary It makes me think of how old I am But we're going to watch a little clip It's a very long movie It's about a, th it's a three minute clip, but I'm only going to play two minutes of it. And Kun Pum will help out with that. While you're watching this clip, I would like you to just take some notes. Maybe do a mind map, write ideas down, whatever. Get a piece of paper or napkin and just write down your ideas. And then afterward, you by yourself or with a partner, think about the message. What is this director trying to tell you? What is his message? Okay, so Kun Pum, whenever you are ready, just two minutes, please. <laughs> Okay, 
So we'll stop the clip there. It, it's much longer than that. But I'll give you a few minutes to think about what those images are trying to tell you. Why did the filmmaker do that? What was he trying to say? Just in case you were not sure, because the quality of the video was not that great, right? Um, they were chicks, right? Little chickens, chicks, and then in a factory. And then you have people in a city, very busy city. Okay, so it was the chicks and then people. The chicks and then the people. So I'll give you about two minutes to write down ideas and think of the one message the filmmaker is trying to say, in your opinion, his message. จากจากคลิปที่เห็นนะคะก็อาจารย์เชยก็บอกว่าเอ่อให้ให้ลองคิดดูซิว่าผู้ที่ทําเอ่อภาพยนตร์สั้นเรื่องนี้นะคะต้
and what we can show depending on the age of our students. So I only chose the safer parts because it gets a little bit more mm, scary. <laughs> scary. Okay. All right. So if you were to write a short speech, very short, expressing your opinion about a topic, whether it's about the choice, about life's value decreasing, about um, overpopulation and overconsumption, whatever idea you think that the filmmaker was trying to say, and then the idea that you're trying to say, right? Whatever you learned from that clip, I'd like you to write a very short speech. So I'll give you time to brainstorm and focus and, and sharpen, shape your topic, right? And then I'll give you another few minutes to write a 30 to 45 second speech. Okay, so very quick, maybe three sentences, four sentences about the topic, your message after you watch the film or that little clip. ค่ะเอ่อกิจกรรมต่อไปนะคะจันเชให้อยากให้ลองเขียนนะคะให้อาจารย์เขียนสปีชซึ่งความยาวแค่นิดเดียวค่ะหมายถึงครึ่งๆ
Yeah, making us feel a little guilty a little bit, right? So yeah, exactly, thank you. Why, why? All right, who else would like to share? Oh, Ajanta. Uh, more cooperation make more problems nowadays. We should have the right to make our own decision. Lucky us, we are human. We can choose the right way to be a smart population like us. We should do smart work, smart heart, and smart population. Mm, thank you. Okay, what are some ideas or words from Ajanda's speech? stand out to you? What do you remember the most? I like the, the repetition of smart and the, it's a good mm. device, I think, in speaking to repeat a word many times. It was very helpful. Mm -hmm. I like that. Thank you. Yes, smart. Um, we all said smart. Smart work, smart money, smart heart, smart heart. Right. That is a rhetorical device called anaphora which you don't have to know the fancy word, but when you, when you have a pattern or a repetition in whatever you're saying or writing, the people remember it more. And then it builds up to a climax. And you're going, oh, yes, that's right. And that's what you were doing. Thank you. We all said smart. Yeah. And it makes us think, are we smart? Yeah. All right. Who else would like to share? Any site? Chiang Mai. Yes. Uh, I took a kind of different approach. I, I wrote, crowded, surrounded by others, crushed together, we are alone. Our fast-paced, mechanized world devalues life and destroys the chance for warmth. There is no opportunity for meaningful relationships, no love. Slow down, smell the roses, bring life back to our increasing mundane existence. All right, that's it. Oh, thank you. Wow. Powerful. What did you get from that? Did anyone? Can, can you repeat that quickly? I'm sorry. I got Anthony Moon, right? You want me to read the whole thing? Yes, okay. please. Okay. Louder. Louder. Good Crowded, feeling. surrounded by others, crushed together, we are alone. Our fast-paced, mechanized world devalues life and destroys the chance for warmth. There is no opportunity for meaningful relationships, no love. Slow down, smell the roses, bring life back to our increasingly mundane existence. Mm. Everyone's nodding. Okay, why are you nodding? What are you nodding about? <laughs> Slow down, right? It's a very powerful because it's all like a command, right? It's telling us, do this, do that. You, Because if not, then what's the point, right? Right, slow down. I think, I think uh, Ajahn here, you're saying slow down, slow down, right? It's making us think we have to slow down, right? Smell the roses. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. All right. Well, last one, anyone before we move on? Huahin, we have one? Yes, we do. Yes, from Huahin. Uh, people can do any, anything in life, but life is very routine. After we do uh, the same thing, uh, happens every day. This is just like uh, chickens in a factory. Uh, we are always rushing, rushing, and rushing. And do you know uh, where are we going? Thank you. Mm, thank you. Again, ending in the question, making us think, do you know, where are we going? All right? Yeah. Oh, it's kind of getting a becoming a depressing morning right now. <laughs> but it's, it's all good for us to, to think about this because we can use this for our classrooms and we can try to get our students to think more about what's happening around them. Right, and then expressing their opinion about it. Yeah, thank you very much. All right. Oh yes, Ajahn. 
ค่ะจากกิจกรรมนี้นะคะเราก็ได้สปีชที่น่าสนใจทุกอันเลยนะคะจากคลิปที่ดูไปเนี่ยนะคะท่านอาจารย์ก็ได้เขียนสปีชแล้วก็มีซึ่งท่านอยากจะยกประเด็นตรงนี้ว่าเทคนิคในการเขียนนะคะที่จะจูงใจผู้ฟังนะคะก็อย่างเช่นที่ท่านจบด้วยคำถามนะคะอย่างเช่นว่า why, why don't stop killing and become vegetarian นะคะหรือว่าเมื่อกี้นี้ที่เพิ่งจบไปจากท่านอาจารย์ที่หัวหินนะคะ do you know where we are going นะคะซึ่งเป็นคำถามคือช่วยจุดประเด็นช่วยทำให้รู้สึกผู้ฟังรู้สึกคล้อยตามทันทีเลยนะคะแล้วก็อีกวิธีหนึ่งก็คือการใช้คำซ้ำๆนะคะอย่างเช่นท่านอาจารย์รุจิรานะคะที่ตั้งคำถามไว้ท้ายเนี่ยก่อนคำถามก็บอกว่า we are rushing 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 do you know where we are going นะคะก็จากคำว่า rushing 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 ใช้เป็น repetition of word นะคะซึ่งซึ่งจะเน้นความรู้สึกร่วมนะคะเพื่อผู้ฟังแล้วก็เช่นเดียวกันนะคะอาจารย์ดารัตก็ใช้คำว่า smart ใช่ไหมคะที่บอกว่า smart people smart heart นะคะอย่างนั้นเป็นต้นแล้วก็ท่านอาจารย์มูลจากเชียงใหม่นะคะก็ใช้คำที่ลักษณะเป็นเหมือนกับอาจารย์เชยบอกว่าเป็นคอมมานนะคะเป็นเหมือนออกคำสั่งหรือว่าเป็นการบอกเป็น imperative นะคะอย่างเช่นบอก slow down smell the roses bring life back อะไรพวกนี้นะคะอันนั้นก็จบท้าย speech อันนั้นก็เป็นการที่ทำให้รู้สึกคล้อยตามได้เช่นกันนะคะก็เป็นเทคนิคเล็กๆน้อยๆซึ่งน่าสนใจแล้วก็น่าจำเอาไปใช้ค่ะ Thank you And so, with with the, these speeches, and when you have your students do your speech, I'm sure you do some sort of evaluation, whether informal or not. And I included in this session the same slide from last session about those three characteristics about um, of persuasion: the ethos or the character, the pathos or the emotion, the connection with the audience, and the logos, the logic behind it. So I will leave this here, but we will continue thinking about these three items throughout the session. So it's about wondering whether the speaker has these qualities in his or her speech. So from this past exercise, what new concepts, what new ideas can you share? What can we add to what we learned before? Can you think of anything about? Opinions about persuasive speeches. Anything new? An insightful idea. We did talk about the question, right? Adding a question for the audience to think about, or for the listener or the reader to think about. So your speech can have a question in it, right? Making people think. And we can have really pick really good words, words that can wake us up, words that can be repeated, and so it is in our head. It's emphasized those words, right? So we can remember it more. So that's another. That's a technique with persuasive speeches, opinions, right? And um, trying to create an image in our head. One thing that I also tell my students is when you're going to have a speech, when you're going to give a speech about something or an opinion, it's an opinion you have to believe in, because if you don't believe in it, I think we can see it, right? You have to really believe in your opinion. That way, your ethos is strong, right? That way, we can believe in you. So I think that's one thing that I always remind my students. You have to really believe in what you are saying. Yeah. So here are some other concepts. Kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple and succinct. Succinct means concise, straight to the point, focused, succinct. Simple and succinct. When you give an assignment to your students in class and ask them to give their opinion about anything, it could be something simple, like what do you think about, um, I don't know, football, right? Or what do you think about this song? Just keep it simple, 
right? How do they feel about it? What do you want to tell your friends? What do you want to tell your classmates? Short, simple, to the point. And you're focusing on that one message. That one message you really want to get across, that you want to tell everybody. What do I want to say? What point do I want to make? So that's one other thing for persuasive speech. Focus on that one message. I like the KISS one. <laughs> Keep it simple and succinct. ค่ะเอ่อขอกลับไปเมื่อกี้นิดนึงนะคะที่อาจารย์เชย์ถามว่าเอ่อเราได้อะไรประเด็นอะไรเพิ่มนะคะจากที่เอ่อทราบมาแล้วเรียนรู้มาแล้วนะคะจากเรื่องการเอ่อพูดหรือว่าการเขียนแบบ จะคอนวินซิ่งมากๆนะคะแล้วก็มาถึงคิสค่ะ K I S S นะมีโฟกัสแล้วก็สั้นแล้วก็เอ่อง่ายที่สุดนะคะใช้ภาษาที่ง่ายค่ะ very spontaneous, right? So, um, this is one of my students from my speaking class. Her name is Ja. I asked her permission before I play this today. And she said, of course, you can play it. And this class, this exercise, was an impromptu speech exercise. I gave a topic. The topic was, the title was, The Measure of Wealth is Not by Money and Not by Possessions. So wealth cannot be measured by your money or by your things. And so I gave them five minutes to write down their ideas, sentences, or just notes. And then I say, okay, please tell me your speech. And I did not give a time limit. I just said, give me your speech. And so this is Jazz speech on money. Uh, there, is a, there is a script in your packet. There is a script. It starts with, Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, everyone. It should be the first one in your packet. Okay, I, I listened to it and I wrote the script two nights ago. So, all right, and when you're listening, um, does she keep it simple? Ask yourself, does she keep it simple? Does it have one main message? How do you think she can improve her speech? Okay, whenever you are ready. Okay, สำหรับคลิปนี้ที่จะได้ฟังนะคะก็เป็นเรื่องหัวข้อคือเรื่องมันนี่นะคะซึ่งเป็นเอ่อลูกศิษย์ของอาจารย์เชนะคะอาจาร
it's essential for everyone's life. Money. That's the thing that the measure of wealth is not through money, no possession. And I agree. It is surprising for me what we can do for money today. We can hurt each other. We can say bad things to each other. Or the worst case, we can kill each other for money. I want you to think about your goal in life. And is it money the main factor for your goal? I would like to call this the wealthy mind, the true wealth that I believe in. The, healthy, the wealthy mind, or is it similar to healthy mind, is the mind that knows the balance. The balanced mind that knows what is important for life. Uh, so for my speech today, I would like you to revise your goal of life. We think we consider about it. The true meaning of life is it really for money or other? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. She was very nervous. <laughs> so I'll, I'll give you about a minute to think about that. Uh, and you can look at the transcript. What, what is good about it? What is not good? What's strong? What's not strong? How can it be better?ค่ะอาจารย์ก็ดูสคริปต์นะคะเดี๋ยวขอสคริปต์ขึ้นด็อกิเมนเทชันอีกทีด้วยนะคะค่ะอาจารย์เชก็บอกว่าลองดูซิว
And for the TV audience, it's here in the slide for you to look at. But basically, there are five criteria for the rubric. And each criteria requires you to give a reason. Your a few sentences explaining why you gave that student a one, two, three, four, five, whatever, in according to that criterion. So the rate and the reason, or why. The first criteria is organization. Does her, her speech have structure? Is there a clear introduction, a body, and a conclusion? The second one, support. Is there sufficient support with examples or maybe a personal story, something she heard of and that she wants to share? Third one is tone. Tone is very important when you are speaking, also when writing. But when you're speaking, you are sharing it with your voice. So the tone of your voice is very important. Is it mature? Is it convincing? Does the person sound confident? The fourth one. Volume. Is the person loud? Not shouting, <laughs> but just loud. Does the person speak clearly also? So pronouncing every word as best as he or she can. And the last one, of course, when you are speaking, making eye contact, right? Not looking at the paper, not looking down, but eye contact and body language. Back straight, shoulders down, looking up. Right. Also, maybe sometimes using a hand to point or go like this. Right. So body language also. So just these five criteria and then a rate from one to five and then explaining why. And of course, throughout all of the student examples, you are more than welcome to change the rubric a little bit because maybe for your students, some of these don't apply or you can add something or change something. So we will be working on how you can tailor or create a rubric specific for your class or your activity. ก็ดูสไลด์นี้นะคะที่เป็นรูบริกส์นะคะเป็นหัวข้อที่เราจะประเมินนะคะการพูดของนักเรียนของเรานะคะที่ท่านอาจารย์ได้กรุณาส่งมาให้นะคะสำหรับรูบริกส์นี้นะคะก็ไม่มีหัวข้อ organization นะคะคือการเรียบเรียงเรียงลำดับเนื้อหานะคะที่เขาพูดเนี่ยนะคะว่ามี introduction มี body มี conclusion ครบไหมนะคะ support ก็อย่างเช่นว่าให้ตัวอย่างหรือว่าให้ facts นะคะให้ข้อเท็จจริงนะคะให้เรื่องเรื่องราวที่ที่ยกมาเป็นตัวอย่างได้ไหมนะคะโชนก็คือวิธีการลักษณะการพูดของนักเรียนเนี่ยนะคะน่าเชื่อถือไหมนะคะแล้วก็ volume นะคะเสียงดังพอไหมชัดเจนไหมนะคะการออกเสียง eye contact body language อันนี้ก็สำคัญนะคะว่าผู้พูดเนี่ยใช้สื่อสารทาง body language นะคะการมองหรือเปล่าหรือโมแต่อ่านสคริปต์นะคะเพราะเวลาพูดนี่สำคัญนะคะก็คือว่ามันไม่ไม่ควรจะดูสคริปต์นะคะค่ะ Thank you So let's ask the teachers that sent in their students voices Could you please share what was your overall reasoning behind Your activity. ค่ะจากท่านอาจารย์ที่ส่งคลิปมาให้นะคะท่านอาจารย์ก็อยู่ตรงนี้ด้วยนะคะก็อยากจะทราบถึงเหตุผลนะคะที่อาจารย์ให้งานนี้กับนักเรียนนะคะว่าอาจารย์บอกนักเรียนว่าอะไรบอกโจทย์ว่าอะไรค่ะอาจารย์โชลาดา Good morning, everybody. Uh, when I have the homework last time we met, I told the student about how to make the world go green, to save the environment. Because last time we we have flood flooding topic, mm -hmm. so we connect to go green to the world, mm -hmm. and I give the vocabulary list about making the world better to solve. The global warming, and then I let them to have maybe around 10 minutes 
to prepare in their speech and we uh, take a video. Huh. That's it. Yes, thank you. Uh, Ajahn, you, you did send me the vocabulary list and I think their discussion questions before they wrote their speech. And it's very appropriate that this was the, the theme or topic for your student speeches and opinions about thinking of the environment. So that's great. Thank you. Ajahn, here? We have two? Ajanda. Yeah. Uh, for me, there, there was a celebration in my city in uh, January, and uh, it's about Chinese New Year. Mm -hmm. And I think that my students should do something about our local celebration. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just give them the situation that if uh, there is a tourist or you have uh, their friends come to Nokon mm -hmm. during the Chinese New Year mm -hmm. and uh, what should they to tell mm -hmm. their friends about the festival. Huh? Thank you. Right, we will be watching a, a video about that and again very appropriate and relevant to the students, what they know. It's also a celebration of, of, of something, a ritual. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share? even if you didn't give anything, <laughs> the rationale that you tried in your classes, reasoning. Does, did anyone in Huahin give something there? I'm not sure. It's okay, when the time comes, perhaps you can explain the reasoning. I think we have a teacher coming to the microphone. Hi, <laughs> Ajahn Hi. So for the script that we sent to you, so it is because the new semester is coming. So we would like to invite the students to study at our school. So we assign the student to talk about their school. Why do they like our school to invite like uh, the new student to study with us? That's the reason that we mm -hmm. assign them to talk about why do I like our school? Thank you. Ah, thank you. Right. It's like an advertisement, right? Come to the school. This is why the school is good. It's great. Welcome. Right. Excellent. That's a video as well. All right. So let us move on to listening to your student voices. So first, actually, is why I like this school. So the teachers from Hua Hin shot a video of, I think her name is Tan, Tan Picha, right? Tan Picha is the name of the student. Very cute. Very cute student. And while Kun Pum is getting that video ready, you can look for the script. Ajahn also provided us with a script. It's somewhere here in your packet. It's the last one, or second, the third to the last. Why I like this school. And while we are listening, oh, I'm sorry. While we are listening, let us pay attention to the five criteria in the rubric. All right. Where it is located at Huahin, from to appear in Tan province. This school belongs to the king, who gives many things this school. I have two reasons why I like this school, where I am studying. First of all, this school belongs to the king. I am very proud to study at Wangai Gangwon School. The school keeps its great tradition as a great institution of knowledge, such as you matter. Second, my teachers always encourage me to study both in class and outside. They always give a non assignment for me to practice. Third, my school has a proven track record of producing winners. Many successful championships have been won by students who study at one great one As a result, two, two teachers and a lot of winners. I'm so proud of my school, and I would like to invite all of you to visit my school. Thank you. So I'll give you a few minutes to work with each other. 
and you could use the script and the rubric. I know the video was um, not, you know, movie quality, so <laughs> the, the sound was a little bit low, but at least we can use the script to analyze a part of the speech.